This video is sponsored by Train World, America's discount model train store since 1968. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're making a train stop and start up again using an Arduino. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you're eligible for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway sponsored by Train World. I am less than a thousand subscribers away from that milestone now. So you'll definitely want to be subscribed to that and special thanks to Train World for being very awesome and giving me a couple prizes, one in N and one in HO scale to give away to you guys as a show of gratitude for all the support you guys have given me. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and hit that like button, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. So a couple little housekeeping things to get to before. You notice that I have a new test track. I've always wanted to have one of these little test tracks so that I can do Arduino projects and demonstrate them properly on uh, model railroad settings rather than just waving my hand in front of sensors. And one other thing is I will be debuting a new building. It is building number four in my set of town buildings. And we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. So right now, let's show you what we got right here. This is a system for automatically stopping a train for a certain amount of time and restarting it. So I'll show you how it works. Once the sensor is tripped, the train stops for a predetermined amount of time and then continues on its way. This is a very, very simple Arduino project to do. If you've been looking for an Arduino project to dive into, this is definitely one that can get your feet wet in it. Let's go ahead and talk about the track setup because it is important because we are using an isolated rail to start and stop the train. So what we have here is we have insulated rail joiners right here and right here. We have isolated this rail electrically. The other side is not isolated. You only need to isolate one rail. You don't need to isolate both of them. And you'll notice that I have power connections to the main bus here, here, and here. So this is the power source for the isolated rail. I also have it connected to a relay right here so that this is what can switch power to the track on and off. And right here I have an infrared sensor that can tell me when the train is passing by. I'm currently working on current sensing techniques and I'm working on something that's going to be simple enough to use for the small amounts of current that these in-scale trains pull. So we're going to demonstrate real quick how this works so that you guys can watch. You can see when the train comes in, the relay is cut once the sensor is tripped for a predetermined amount of time and then cuts back on and sends the train on its way. So let's go ahead and dive into the components. First, of course, is the Arduino. In this case, we're using an Arduino Uno. And then you're going to need some sort of sensor. I'm using an infrared sensor right here. And then you're also going to need a relay. So those are the three components plus the wires and the track. All right, so let's get this build started. First, you'll notice that I have my Arduino right here. This is actually a custom printed Arduino mount. It's got some screw holes in it and everything. I designed this and printed it. And if you guys are interested in something like this, let me know in the comments. It's even got a little uh, case that I can put on it right here that has spots for all the wires to come out, but will hold the Arduino in place and is designed to be mounted upside down. So let's go ahead and begin wiring. We're going to start by wiring the power. We're going to go ahead and hook up that 5 volt. Then we're going to hook up the ground. Now the first thing we're going to wire up is we're going to wire up our sensor itself. So the sensor I'm going to be doing black for positive and white for ground and we're just going to plug those in as so on the power strip like that next we're going to be powering up the relay and we're going to be using red for positive and orange for negative or ground and we're going to plug those into our power strip like so. Now 
Now we're going to go ahead and hook up our sensor output from the infrared sensor that we're going to be using. You'll notice that this one has four pins. The ones I usually use have three pins. We're going to ignore that fourth pin. Three pin ones will work just fine. You just want to put the hookup on the output pin and we're going to hook that into analog pin A0. And next we're going to hook up into the input pin of the relay and hook that into digital pin 7. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put the power leads into our relay. I'm going to loosen up this one here and the middle one right there. The one coming from the track going to go right there and the one coming from the power bus is going to go in the middle I'll set that right there and that is all the wiring that you have to do Okay, we've got everything wired up, so let's go ahead and hop into the Arduino IDE and do some programming. Okay, everyone, we're in our Arduino IDE, and the first thing we need to do is we need to declare our integer. So we're going to do int sensor equals a zero. Now what this does is it sets pin a zero as our sensor input. Then we need to do int relay equals 7 because we plugged it into digital pin 7 and this sets digital pin 7 as our relay control if I can spell. You guys know me and my spelling. So that's everything we need to do for the integers. It's really just two simple things being controlled. So we can go ahead and hop into our setup. So we're going to do void setup. Put our parentheses right there. And then put our bracket. Serial dot begin parentheses 9600, which is our baud rate. And this starts up the serial monitor so we can look at it on the computer screen. Then we need to do establish pin mode relay as an output. And that is it for the setup. So now we're going to go ahead and do our loop. So we'll do void loop. Go ahead and put our parentheses in our bracket. Then we're going to do another integer. Integer value A1, VAL A1 equals, then we're going to do analog read parentheses sensor. And that sets value A1 as whatever the sensor reads. And then so that we can see it, we'll go ahead and do serial.print line. That's for what LN means. And put in parentheses value A1. Now we need to do our if then statement. So we're going to do if parenthesis value a1 is less than 500 bracket digital write parenthesis relay low so this sets the relay to cut the power to the track So we want it to just delay for a certain period of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to initiate a delay. 
And for this particular time, we're going to do three seconds, which means we need to do 3000 milliseconds. So this sets our delay stop in, or set, we'll say this sets the length of time our train will be stopped in milliseconds. Then we need to do digital write relay high. And this returns power to the track. And then we need to set a delay of some sort. So for instance, for this one, we're just going to do 10 seconds, which is 10 thousand milliseconds and this This gives us basically a 10 second window for the train to exit before it starts cutting the power back off. So basically, if you have longer trains, you're gonna to wanna to set a longer amount of time. If you have shorter trains, you're gonna to wanna to set, you know, a good amount of time, but this is really what you can adjust. So I'm gonna say in milliseconds, And then we're just going to do one just to make sure. So if value a one is greater than 500, digital write relay high. This keeps the power on while the sensor is not tripped. And that is the entire sketch. It really isn't much, guys. It's really, really simple. It's really, really easy to do. It's one that, that if you're looking to dive into this, like I said, it's a really great place to stop. So let's go ahead and verify it. There we go. And we can start uploading. Okay, we have built everything out. Let's go ahead and give this a test run. You can see the train cuts off and then heads back on its way. And you can see that within the 10 seconds, the train is not going to cut off the power. But once the 10 seconds are up, it can go back to where it cuts off the power. So that's how you start and stop a train automatically using track power in an Arduino. Just takes a couple of components and some very, very simple code. If you're looking to get your feet wet with Arduino, this is a great place to start in terms of model rail running. So go ahead and give that a try if you want to. I'll have all the parts linked in the description below. And let's go ahead and talk about what we talked about at the beginning of the episode, which is building number four. Building number four is a different style of building as opposed to buildings one through three. It's got a long front and a lot of large windows, six large windows and two doors, one double, one single. You can also see that it has a side door. It also snugs right up to the edge of the base that comes with this, which is unlike the other ones, which leave a little bit of a room for an alleyway. So this can be snugged right up next to other buildings. And of course, the base has the light plug right there. So this is on sale right now in the Etsy store for $12 and the imperfect prints are on sale for $7. I don't have a lot of imperfect prints because I'm really starting to get better at printing. So uh, that's it for all of this guys. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon so that you can, don't miss any updates. Like this video plus you'll be eligible for the 10,000 subscriber giveaway sponsored by Train World. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe and happy railroading.